Okay, so exercise 4D is about expressions related to the roots of a polynomial. And we're just going to dive straight in with this. Um, it says at the beginning, we've seen that we can calculate the sum of the roots and the product of the roots of a polynomial without actually needing to find the roots themselves. We also saw that for quadratic equations, we could find expressions for the sum of the squares of the roots or the sum of the reciprocals of the roots, both in terms of alpha plus beta, so the sum of the roots, and alpha beta, the sum of the pairs. Um, and these values could both be easily evaluated. So the sum of the squares of the roots was alpha squared plus beta squared. And we knew that that came from doing alpha plus beta all squared and then removing the extra two alpha beta that would be generated. And the sum of the reciprocals, 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta, just came out as alpha plus beta over alpha beta. And so these identities that we have here can be extended to cubics and to quartics as well. And I've said that you can use these results without proof. And these often pop up as like a part C or a part D question. Um, and you really should memorize these because they are just free marks if you've memorized those things that we have. So the quadratic equation, sorry, the, the sum of the squares for a quadratic we've already talked about is alpha plus beta squared minus 2 alpha beta. And if we write that into sigma notation, it would be the sum of the pair, sorry, the sum of the roots all squared. Notice how I have to do the brackets around the whole of the root there because we're squaring the sum of the roots. And we're then going to subtract from that two lots of... Uh, alpha beta and I guess I could say that as the sum of alpha beta if I wanted to. Now I'm not going to ask you to prove this one for the cubic but this is what it would be for the cubic and when you translate it into sigma notation you've got the sum of the roots all being squared so again you have the sum of the roots all being squared and you're minusing two lots of the product pairs that you've got here so it's actually the same as the formula for the sum of the squares of a quadratic. And then for a quartic, we have the same thing. We have that the sum of the squares of the roots is the sum of the roots, all squared, minus two lots of the sum of the possible product pairs that you've got here. So for the sum of the squares, the quadratic, the cubic, and the quartic, when in sigma notation, they are all the same as each other. And I think that quite makes sense because this first one that we've got here is just makes sense with our knowledge of how brackets expand. And so we just can actually use that if we put it into sigma notation to work it out for cubics and quartics as well. This is where things do get a bit more challenging. And they have actually asked some questions on these in, uh, I think, in the 2019 exam. So the sum of the cubes is where things look a little bit trickier. This is trying to say, what is alpha cubed plus beta cubed? Well, it's alpha plus beta cubed minus 3 alpha beta plus alpha beta. And we're going to try and translate that into sigma notation that we've got here. So to begin with, it would be the sum of the roots, all cubed. Then we're going to minus three times, well, although there's only one of the pairs here, I'm still going to write it in its pair notation that we've got like this. And it's also going to multiply by the sum of the roots. So that one we're going to try and think about how we might memorize this in a second. But unfortunately, the one for cubics is actually different. The one for cubics has got some extra stuff going on. So it does start off in the same way. You do have the sum of the roots all being cubed. That's this bit. And you're minusing 3 times the sum of the roots times the sum of the product pairs. So I'm going to write it in the same order as the one for the, um, the quadratic. And then you also have this extra bit at the end, which is plus 3 alpha beta gamma. So this one is lacking the plus 3 alpha beta gamma. Well, the reason it's lacking that is because there are only two roots. So you couldn't possibly have this one for the quadratic anyway. So that's why this bit isn't actually here. Now, I've said that we can use these cubes for, um, sorry, we can see that these cube formulae don't generalize nicely as we increase the order of the polynomial. And for this reason, you are not required to know the sum of the cubes for quartics. But you do need to know this one for the cubic down here. And it did come up as a two marker in one of the recent um, official exams that there were. So how do we remember uh, memorize this? Because we do need to memorize this. Well, I probably start off by thinking of what the sum of the squares are. And we just said on the previous page that the sum of the squares is going to be the sum of the roots, all squared, minus 2 times the product pairs that we've got. 
So I'm going to see if we can try and think about how we would remember the sum of the cubics. Well, it starts off the same way, but as a cubic version. So it's the sum of the roots, but instead of it being squared, it's all cubed. And you're still going to be subtracting, but because it's not a square anymore, it's going to be a cube. I'm going to change the 2 to a 3. And there is, alongside the sum of the alpha betas, there is also an extra sum of alpha as well. And I think the reason I remember this whole section that I've got here is that there actually needs to be like one, two, three roots because it's to do with cubic, whereas a square, there's only two bits that we have here. And then the last part that we need to remember is there is this extra bit of three alpha, beta, gamma. And that extra three alpha, beta, gamma, if you use it for the sum of the cubes for a quadratic, obviously this thing isn't going to be here because there's actually only two roots that we've got. So I think that the sum of the squares is the way I would start off by remembering this. I would change it from a squared to a cubed, from a 2 to a 3. I would add in this so that there are technically three roots at this point that you've got here. And then you also have to plus 3 alpha, beta, gamma that we've got at the end. And then we're just going to try and use these in a few different questions, OK? Oh, we've got to do reciprocals as well. So we know that the sums of the reciprocals, when you add these together, you would just have alpha plus beta over alpha beta, which we could say is the sum of the roots over the sum of the pairs. This one would be uh, alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma all over alpha beta gamma. So that's the sum of the pairs over the triples. I could put the sigma notation in. It doesn't really matter. And then this last one, I'm not going to write out the whole thing, but it's going to be the sum of the triples alpha, beta, gamma over alpha, beta, gamma, delta. And again, it could have that sigma notation because there's only one of them there anyway. And so you'll notice that the numerator is always one less than the denominator. That's the pattern for the sums of the reciprocals. And then for the product of powers, I've just got these written out here, that if you ever wanted to find out what, I don't know, alpha squared times beta squared times gamma squared was, that's just the same as alpha, beta, gamma, all squared, just because of index laws that we've got there. So we're just going to do a few very short examples on this that applies all of this together. So it says the three roots of a cubic equation are alpha, beta, and gamma. Given that the sum of the roots is 3 over 2, the sum of the product pairs is minus 4 over 3, and then your alpha, beta, gamma is a half, find the value of the sums of the reciprocals. So that's 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta plus 1 over gamma. Well, we know that's going to be the sum of the pairs over alpha, beta, gamma. So that's minus 4 over 3 divided by a half. Multiply the top and bottom by 2, and you get minus 8 thirds. The next one says to find the squares of the roots. So it wants you to do alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared. Now. We should have remembered that this is going to be the sum of the roots, all squared, minus 2 times the sum of the product pairs. You need to memorize these formulae. So that's going to be 3 over 2 squared, minus 2 times minus 4 over 3, which is, when you put that in your calculator, 59 over 12. Part C of the question wants the sum of the cubes. So we want alpha cubed plus beta cubed plus gamma cubed, which is, if you can remember the formula, we're going to adapt this one. It's going to be the sum of the roots cubed minus 3 instead of 2. And we're going to add in an extra sum of the alpha here. And we also need to add 3 alpha, beta, gamma as well. So when you sub all these bits, you get 3 over 2 cubed minus 3 times minus 4 over 3 times 3 over 2 plus 3 times a half. And we just did this one earlier. And when you type all of that into your calculator, you get 87 over 8. And then for the last part of this question, alpha cubed, beta cubed, gamma cubed, it's just going to be the same as alpha, beta, gamma, all cubed, which is a half cubed, which is an eighth. So I think the hardest part of this topic is memorizing this formula and knowing it as a variation of this formula that we've got here. 
two more examples. Should be a bit quicker than this one as well. So this one was originally typed wrong, so I've just changed the typing of this one. We've got three roots of this cubic equation. We know that the sum of the pairs is 7. The sum of the roots is minus 3. And we want to know the sum of the squares, which is going to be the sum of the roots squared minus 2 times the sum of the pairs. So it's going to be minus 3 squared minus 2 times 7. So it's 9 minus 14, which is minus 5 for that one. Just using that standard formula there. And then, oh, this was one we actually started doing with a class. So I'm actually just going to refresh that board. So this time you've been told what the things are. We know that alpha, beta, gamma is 4. The sum of the pairs is minus 5. And the sum of the roots is 3. Now, this is not one of the standard things that we've got here. We've got alpha plus 3, beta plus 3, gamma plus 3. So we're going to need to expand this and see what we get. I'm going to start off by expanding these two brackets. So I'm going to have uh, alpha beta plus 3 alpha plus 3 beta plus 9. And I'm going to multiply that by gamma plus 3. So I'm going to take everything here and multiply it by gamma. Alpha beta gamma plus 3 alpha gamma plus 3 beta gamma plus 9 gamma. And I'm going to take everything here and multiply it by 3. So that's 3 alpha beta plus 9 alpha plus 9 beta plus 27. And then I'm going to rewrite this. So I have alpha beta gamma. I'm just going to cross off that I've used it. And I've got 3 alpha beta, 3 beta gamma, and 3 alpha beta. Well, that's 3 times the alpha betas. And then you've got 9 gamma, 9 alpha, 9 beta. So I've got 9, the sum of the roots. And then I've got an extra 27 at the end. So when I sub all of this in, I get 4 plus 3 times minus 5 plus 9 times 3 plus 27. So that's 4 minus 15 plus 27 plus 27. And so what's that? Minus 11 plus 27 plus 27. So I could just put this in my calculator. Uh, 16 plus 27 or 43. So there are some questions in exercise 4D that my class have been working on. We're re-recording this video because things went wrong in the first one. And there are a few questions I just wanted to point out that are totally ridiculous and I don't really think should be... Um, I don't think there's much to gain from doing these kinds of questions. So some of the ones that I think are not very useful to have a look at are things like question 6D and 6E, questions 8D and 8E. They are just like an intense, crazy amount of algebra that you're being asked to do that I don't think is actually developing an awful lot of, I don't think there's, there's much of interest from there to come from them. The algebra, if you look on Solution Bank, is almost like two pages long. So these ones here I don't think are worth doing. I can't imagine them asking you anything that crazy in the exam, but you know, stranger things have happened. I think you're much better to focus on questions 10, 11, 12 onwards for that exercise 4D. Okay.